Hey everyone, Mr. Mase here. This is a guide for numbering 24 hours with the Volkswagen Scirocco Group 4. Let's get this started. For this guide, we are using the Volkswagen Scirocco Group 4 as this is a pretty easy car to drive around numbering 24 hour and it's also really good for this week's daily race C. Brake balance is a plus one for a bit more rotation and we're on the racing medium tires for the time trial. Your first breaking point is going to be the very end of the path that is on the left. So you'll brake right here, brake hard for a short while and slowly ease off of the brakes as you turn in. You want to make sure that you nail this first apex as there's a little dip that can help the car rotate a bit more. Lots of throttle and braking control. Try to nail the second apex without hitting the tires and get on the throttle as soon as you can. And for this upcoming left turn, brake just as the track piece on the right ends, then brake just before the curb on the left ends. And we are going through this a little quickly so we don't spend all day doing this lap guide. So just as the curb on the left is going to start, that is where you're going to want to brake. Brake hard for a short while, slowly ease off of the brakes, nice and slow transition over to the throttle so you don't understeer onto the gravel. The S's can be taken flat out, but for the FF cars, you might need to do a very quick lift off of a throttle. Bring yourself to the right and brake before the 100 meter board. Take advantage of the apex, bring yourself to the left, go onto fourth gear and use a little bit of braking control. Nice and easy on the throttle so you don't touch the gravel. You're going to want to make sure that you bring yourself towards the right and you want to brake pretty late for this turn so brake before you pass the 50 meter board. Quick burst of braking and take advantage of the apexes and the curbs. Try to accelerate your way out, bring yourself towards the right, look for the dry patch of grass that is on the left as that is your next breaking point. Go for a light apex on this turn and then you want to bring yourself towards the right as you're going to break just after the pit wall on the right ends. You can even take advantage of the extra little bit of space where the pit exit lane is. Get the car rotated and then get on the throttle as soon as you can. There's a sign on the left that you can use as your turning point. This turn can be taken flat out. And then there's a little dry patch of grass on the right that you want to use as your next braking point. You will need to do a little bit of braking control as you're braking for pretty much two turns at once. Nice and easy on the throttle. Quick burst of braking for this right and left turn and then brake just as the tarmac changes from a lighter to a darker color. So brake right around here, try to take advantage of the curbs and get on the throttle as soon as you can. Now for this part, you're going to want to do a lift off of a throttle. Do the lift just after you make this little jump over here. Quick lift off of a throttle get on the throttle as soon as you can to try to maintain a high speed. Fast forward through this, lift off of the throttle for this left turn and brake just as the curb on the left ends. So you're going to be braking hard for a short while. Gently ease off of the brakes as you turn in and the car will rotate a bit more if you let the car coast so no braking nor throttle. This car will rotate a bit quicker if you do that. Fast forward through this, look for a dry patch of grass that is on the right as you want to brake just as you pass it. And you can be a little brave and brake a little bit later, but it is a little risky. Then brake just after you make that left turn and you want to bring yourself to the right as soon as you can. There is a crosswalk coming up. So you want to brake before you pass this crosswalk Bring yourself all the way to the left as soon as you can. Lots of braking control. Take advantage of the curves as it'll help your car rotate a bit faster and you can get on the throttle a little bit sooner. Now take a nice deep breath and get ready to tackle the next series of turns. 
this upcoming left turn, all you need to do is just lift off of the throttle, look for the writing that is on the ground as you want to brake just after you pass it. Brake hard for a short moment and slowly ease off of the brakes as you turn in. Look for some signs on the left. Those are your braking points. You can coast your way through part of this turn so the car can rotate a bit faster. The S's can be taken flat out over here. Brake just before the curb on the right starts. Lots of braking control, just trying to maintain a high speed and brake just after the dry patch of grass on the left starts. Lots of braking control once again as you're braking for two turns. Get the car pointing where you want to go and get on the throttle as soon as you can. Then brake just before the curb on the right end, so brake right around here. Nice and easy off of the brakes. Brake just before the curb on the left ends. Get on the throttle as soon as you can. And take another nice little breather as you want to get ready for this upcoming right turn. So for this upcoming right turn, there is a blue dot that you can use as your braking point and you want to brake just after you pass it. Brake hard for a short moment, slowly ease off of the brakes as you turn in and carefully get on the throttle. Let's go ahead and fast forward through this because nothing really happens to here. Left off of our throttle as you make this left turn and then take another breather as you take this right turn flat out and then brake before the curb on the left starts so you will be braking hard for a short while and carefully ease off of the brakes as you turn in. Nice and easy on the throttle especially with the FF cars or front wheel drive cars. Look for the happy little tree that is on the left as you want to brake just after you pass it. Make sure you say hello to it each time you pass it. Brake hard for a short moment. Slowly ease off of the brakes, taking advantage of the carousel and get on the throttle as soon as you can. This left turn that is coming up can be taken flat out, but then you want to brake just before the curb on the right starts. Nice and easy on the brakes. Then look for a path that is on the right as you want to brake before you pass it. So you want to brake hard for a short moment and quickly ease off of the brakes. This right turn can be taken full out, but get ready to brake for this left turn as it's really easy for the car to want to lose control over here. Brake before the curb on the left ends. Bring yourself towards the right. Look for a Yokohama sign as you want to brake before you pass it. Brake hard for a short moment, bring yourself towards the left and just after this left turn ends, you want to start your brakes so or right around here. Quick burst of braking, then brake before the curb on the left ends. Nice and easy on the throttle as this turn is a little longer drawn out. And then brake just after the dry patch of grass on the right starts. You want the car to be pointing where you want to go as soon as you can so you can get on the throttle. Then there's going to be a little jump over here. Brake just after you make the jump. It's a little risky but you can gain some time by braking just a little bit later. Then this part can be taken flat out and then you can pretty much just take a nice little breather until we reach the next part. So be aggressive through these turns. Then for this upcoming right turn, you want to look for a digital flag that is on the right. Brake just after you pass it. Brake hard for a short moment. Slowly ease off of the brakes. Brake before the curb on the right ends. And then if you have the cones option on, you want to use them as your braking points. So brake right here. Brake hard for a short moment. Nice and easy off of the brakes, taking advantage of the mini carousel. Bring yourself towards the left. Brake just before the curb on the left ends. And then do a little bit of throttle control as we get ready to go into hyperspeed mode. So take a little breather. We're going to fast forward through this. And then just after the curb on the left ends, that is where you want to start to brake. So you can brake right here. 
it is also possible to break just a tad bit later. Take advantage of the curves and get on the throttle as soon as you can. Wow, that took a while. So that is pretty much it for the lap guide. We'll take a quick look at the strategies. You still here? All right, awesome. So for this week's Daily Race C, we are taking a look or we're doing a race at numbering 24 hours with the group four cars. So this race is going to be a really weird one. So the tower is at times eight. So if you're using the racing medium tires, tower will be an issue. But if you're using the racing hard tires, tire wear is not an issue. Fuel is a times seven, which means that fuel is going to be a massive problem. So you're going to see people doing lots of fuel saving and there's a very good reason why. In terms of tires, the racing medium and hard tires are available to be used, but only the racing hard tires are required to be used. So you need to use the racing hard tires for at least one lap. So you don't get a one minute penalty after the race ends. And be careful through this first turn because you don't want to be that one person that ends up uh, starting the whole Punt City shenanigans. So break a little early for the first turn, especially with the cold tires. So this is a weird race. So it's going to come down to the one stop where you do the racing medium to hard tires or vice versa or the zero stop where you do a lot of fuel saving on the racing hard tires. And guess what? The no stop on the racing hard tires while doing mega fuel saving is going to be the faster strategy. Believe it or not, the pit loss for the one stop here at the uh, numbering 24 hour is massive. So you're basically going to want to do a heck of a ton of fuel saving. So ways to fuel save are being under someone's slipstream as you see right now, adjusting the fuel mapping as you see on the bottom right hand corner of the screen and doing lots and lots and lots and lots of short shifting. So for example, in my case, because I am under the substream of the Audi TT cup in front of me, I'm basically shifting a lot earlier than usual. But if I was by myself, I would normally be shifting when the bar on the bottom of the screen reaches around half full. And as we approach some of these turns, I do whip on the fuel mapping to six. So it's using the least amount of fuel except it's giving me the, the least am amount of power. So whenever I'm getting ready to go through a higher speed section, I go to film up one, do a lot of short shifting. And when I'm getting ready to have to break soon, or if I'm reaching towards a, my top speed, or if I'm about to go through a twisty part of the track, then I whip the film up to six. So we're going through a twisty part of the track. So film up to six, we don't need the power so I can feel safe a bit more over here. So our friend Turismo Lester, he's in first place right now. He's actually trying to do the one stop because we were curious about whether the one stop was faster or not. So he is on the racing medium tires and he's going all out. Meanwhile, second place and I were both on the racing hard tires. We're both going for the no stop and we're both fuel saving for days. And if you do decide to go the fuel saving route, you want to be very careful about how you do the fuel saving because it can be really easy to mess it up and find yourself running out of fuel early on. So when you start lap two, you want to be at 50% fuel. If you have more than 50% of fuel left as you start lap two, then you're doing a pretty good job. But if you're under 50% of fuel as you start lap two, then you're in a bit of trouble. And I'll show this part before I fast forward through this because this video is already a bit long and I don't want to keep you guys in here too much. So as we approach this turn or the series of turns, I whip the film up to six and just feel safe as much as I can. So fuel saving, it's crucial for this race. It's basically a life or death situation because if you are too aggressive on your car and you try to go all out, you don't feel safe enough, 
you'll either be forced to pit or you'll have to do some extreme fuel saving or worse run out of fuel and make yourself look silly because i have already seen that happen and i don't want to expose who they are just so i don't embarrass them but yeah i've seen some people already run out of fuel and it's kind of sad because they have to go 50 miles an hour as they're going all the way through the north life it's pretty embarrassing so you don't want to be that person if you're doing the fuel saving route if you're going for the zero stop so lots and lots of fuel saving you want to adjust the fuel mapping cruise around if possible so left off of throttle when you don't need the power short shift a lot and use the slipstream because all that's going to be extremely crucial to make your fuel, your fuel last all of two laps so let's keep on over towards the start of the final straight over at the north side of the section we can use a little bit of bump drafting just be nice and careful don't shunt the car too hard otherwise the game might mistake that as a punt and give you a penalty so you can you can work together with other cars to try to go a little bit faster and just don't forget to still keep on fuel saving because it's going to be crucial for this race so in a bit our friend Lester is going to pin on over he's going from the racing medium to hard tires and he will have to refuel so right now we're doing pretty good we're at 54% of fuel so we have a bit of extra fuel to play around with so Lester just pitted he was on the racing medium tires and he's going to have to refuel quite a bit he was nine seconds ahead of us and well we're basically never going to see him again because he's going to be stuck in the pit stops for about a trillion years so <laughs> believe it or not the pit stop for this race is ridiculously long depending on how much you have to refuel you'll be losing around 28 to 35 seconds so yeah don't 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 pit do the fuel saving route but anyways, before we go, we'll take a quick look at places to overtake and the penalty serving zones as there are two penalty serving zones. So the main straight is one of the safer places to get the overtake done, especially with the use of slipstream. So if you want to go for a pass, you can do so over here. Just make sure you don't overshoot your turn because it's going to be really easy to do that. Most of the overtaking opportunities are going to be on the GP section because the Norschleife, there's very few places to get the overtake done and most of them are really dangerous places. So if you want to go for a pass, try to do it over here at the GP section. Here's the first penalty serving zone. You don't lose much time if you have to serve a penalty right here. This is also another place where it is possible to get the overtake done. And we're just going to be cruising on over, enjoying a nice little Sunday drive, pretty much just tailgating the heck out of first place. And also, as we go through this, because the next overtake section doesn't appear for a while, um, go to cars. Pretty much, you want cars that are good on fuel. So the Audi TT Cup and the Volkswagen Scirocco, it, it's basically cheating. <laughs> it's like using a cheat code because these two cars are really good on fuel and they barely lose any pace. So if you can get the fuel saving down, then you're basically you're basically set with these two cars. Anyways, this part over here, another place to get the overtake done with another one appearing right after. So this part right here, it is possible to try to sneak in and overtake. And after that, it's going to be a while before we even see a relatively safe place to get an overtake done because this track narrows down at the North Life and it gets pretty dangerous to even go too wide. So let's skip on over. We just made our tiny cute little jump over at the Flug Platz and this is the next potential spot to get the overtake done. It is still pretty dangerous so be aware about the cars around you take advantage of the slipstream and you can easily get a pass done just try to be careful about it because it's really easy to make an incident happen and after that there's not really going to be any places to get an overtake done or any safe places to get the overtake done until another while from now so let's skip on over to there so we're about halfway into the Norschleife section 
So there's another back straight over here where it is possible to get the overtake done, especially with the use of slipstream, but it is still going to be dangerous to get the overtake done. So you have to be careful with those around you if you are trying to get a pass done. And if you start to battle out through here, you will have to slow down and that means that you will lose time. So do be careful about trying to get the overtake done. And after this part, another place to get the overtake done is not really going to appear for another long, long while, at least a safe place to get it done. And it's going to be the final back straight over at the North Life section. This is also where the final penalty serving zone is, so you don't want to get a penalty and have to serve it here because having to serve even half of a second penalty means that you're going to lose a ridiculous amount of time. So this back straight, it is possible to get the overtake done. It's the safest place to get the overtake done, but you want to time it right because as you said right now, I went for the move, but the TT cup, he's going to slingshot past me. So I did the overtake too soon. So now we're going to go too wide and well, he's actually just going to end up passing me altogether. So you want to time your overtake just right so that they don't have a response to give back so yeah this is pretty much it for the guide and actually check out this finish because this was a really close finish i was able to rev it up because i had around eight percent of fuel left just from the extra fuel saving and are we going to get the finishing move no very close finish but yeah this is a really weird race where you have to do a lot of fuel saving make the two laps of fuel count and you don't want to pit because you're going to lose about 35 years in the pit stops so that's all for me i'm going to sign off now and actually luster he there we go so he finished 21 seconds behind because he did the pit stop so don't pit at all do the fuel saving or or just skip the whole race because i don't blame you if you skip the race but anyways, that is all for me. And because this is the number 24 hour, I'm not going to put up the non-commentary parts just to keep this video short because this video is already long enough as it is. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off now. So this is Mr. MCA wishing you a good race and I'll see you in the next video.